if the colors are across from each other on the color wheel, they are complementary colors. That means they have the greatest contrast of one another. When you blend them together, they neutralize. If you want your orange to appear more dull, then you should add blue to it. If you want your blue to appear more dull, then you should add orange to it. So the complementary color scheme, using the blue and the orange together, is my favorite color scheme. This is easy to understand, it's easy to implement, and it produces the best results. So how does this actually break down on the palette? I have my four colors here, as you can see, white, black, yellow, and red. The majority of the time I will be using the analogous color scheme, so the first thing that I'm actually going to mix up is going to be an orange. This orange is just a blending of the yellow and the red, and I'm looking to get about a 50-50 balance between the two. I'm not at all concerned with the actual volume of those colors when I say 50-50. What I mean is that in appearance, there's a 50-50 blending. So it looks like a good blending of the two. It's not yellow-orange or red-orange, it's actually just orange. From this point, I mix a brown, and the way to get that is actually to just add black to the orange. That's going to be a very, very useful color. This works great for your darker shadows. I'm going to use that same exact base orange to mix the light side flesh colors as well. So for the light side, all I do is add white to the mixture. According to color theory, this is still the monochromatic palette because I'm only using orange and I'm blending that with either black and white. The next color I mix is going to be something useful for more of the mid-toned and any of the lighter shadows on the shadow side, that will be a blending of my warmer light side flesh tone together with that brown. I have a warmer light side flesh tone and a highlight tone that's going to be just a little bit lighter. That works well for all of the lighter areas. The warmer tone is gonna to be used in the warmer or darker areas of the face, places like the nose, the eyes, the lips, the cheeks, and the highlight tone is going to be used for the brighter areas like the forehead, the cheekbone, the highlight on the nose, and any of those more protruding highlights. For my absolute brightest highlight, I can use just pure white. For the shadow side, I have the darker brown. For the majority of the painting, I'm gonna be using that for the darkest shadows, and then I will use that lighter tone for the warmer or, or not quite so dark shadows. Eventually, as the painting develops, I will use the black for my absolute darkest points in the painting, like the pupils, the nostril, and the line of the mouth. So the majority of the time, my palette is actually going to look like this. It's not going to be any more complex, and this would technically be considered a monochromatic palette. The single color that I'm using is the orange. If I want to get more particular in certain areas, I could add a little bit of yellow or a little bit of red to that mixture. The highlights, for example, will get more of the yellow, and warmer areas will get more of the red. Places like the nose, the lips, the eyes, and the cheeks will get more of that red. At that point, it means I'm pushing this palette into the analogous color scheme. That means all of the colors being used are very close by on the color wheel. They're touching each other, they're next to each other. So I'm not really blending any further than that. I'm not going to use really any pure red or pure yellow. So that it's actually going to be all still within that kind of orange range. So this is actually the palette that I recommend. This is what I would say you should use. And you shouldn't even worry about using the complementary color scheme because this is so easy and it works so well. On top of that, I would also recommend that you pre-mix your colors to make the job easier for yourself. The colors that I always have pre-mixed are the orange, the base orange that I'm using, which is just a mixture of yellow and red. That is extremely useful because you can use that at any time to warm up any area that you need to. If my brush starts to get a little bit muddy, if I just need a little bit of extra punch of warmth, or for any reason I need that extra saturation, then I like to have that orange available. The other two colors that I absolutely think you should have pre-mixed are the brown and the warmer light side flesh tone. This will just really simplify the process for you it will make it easy for you to get the necessary contrast, and it's going to just reduce the friction of starting to paint each day. Anything you can do to really just make it easier for yourself so you can start painting 
without needing to do any preparation work is absolutely fantastic. On top of that, you're going to have a certain consistency if you pre-mix these colors because you're gonna be working with the same colors repeatedly. That will help you to get acquainted with the palette and to understand the more basic concepts without needing to worry about any of the complications that come with mixing that palette or using a variety of colors. If you feel you have a really good grip on the analogous palette, you think you're getting the necessary contrast and the other things are going well with your painting, then you could look at using the complementary color scheme. The only difference there is that you're going to add a blue to your palette. So this is Apella's blue. I'm actually using the Mars black and mixing it together with white to get the Apella's blue. The Mars black actually has just a little bit of blue in it. So that's what gives it that little blue punch. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.